Hello and welcome to the Wolf's Den. I'm Dave, flying solo tonight, and this is our Whose Effin' Pyramid Is Danny Living In? podcast. This has kind of been a pet theory of mine, so I decided that this would be a perfect thing for me to give you guys and maybe bounce this idea off of you. So hopefully I can kind of get it either reinforced or you guys can tell me that I'm out of my mind. So, a brief overview of Danny's Pyramid for those of you who aren't overly familiar with it. It is a 33-stepped, 800-foot pyramid that is designed to be a replica of the original Great Pyramid that was in Old Gis thousands and thousands of years ago. And obviously, if you guys noticed that it had the 33 steps, there are some definite Masonic symbolism things going on with this pyramid that I haven't totally flushed out. I think I talked to a couple of you, I believe, about this on social media a couple of times when I was first delving into this pyramid. Like, But this pyramid is quite unique. It is more than twice the size of any of the other pyramids in Marine. And more importantly, we're never told whose it was. Ever. We just know that Danny set up shop in this great, big, 800-foot pyramid that is twice as big and twice as lavish as all the other ones. We're told that it has, or that it had, a great harpy throne in a throne room, and that it had a huge harpy at its apex, a bronze one, that Danny had torn down. But then, we're never told anything else about it. We just kind of move on with the story, having no idea whose freaking house this is. It's the biggest and most lavish pyramid there. There's no way that it was uninhabited before Danny got there. It certainly doesn't appear to have been left in disarray. There's no mention of Danny having to, you know, clean it all up. In a Quentin chapter, he mentions that they were going to use one of the side doors or entrances that the slaves used to use to bring food in and out of the pyramid. So, it was definitely inhabited before Danny got there. But whose freaking house is this? Skahas lists all the families while they're standing on her terrace, I believe, and says that they're sitting in their pyramids right now. So, it's not any of the families, the great noble families with the great masters of Marine, all of their houses, their pyramids, are all accounted for. Which kind of has me believing, and Mary Ellen agrees with me, we've talked about this several times, that Danny is living in the Harpies Pyramid. Galaza Galare's Pyramid. And why do I think this? Because Danny never mentions any of the other pyramids having harpies on top of them. And we don't really get a good look inside, or I don't even know if we get a look inside, I don't think we do any of the other pyramids. But Danny has a throne room with a harpy throne. So... I think we mentioned this in one of our previous uh, Danny videos, or maybe it was the Who is the Harpy video, that the Gascari people seem to have been some ruled in something of a theocratic way. It seems like the Green Grace was the de facto ruler of Marine before Danny got there. At least it seems likely that she was the ruler of even though they didn't really like have a king or a queen, the Green Grace seems to be their leader. And as the Green Grace, it seems like she's the one who it would make the most sense for this to be her house. Especially since we're pretty sure that she is the Harpy. And more importantly, symbolically speaking... It also seems to point very heavily towards this being the former 
ruler, quote unquote, place. Because when Danny had the huge harpy taken down, it was sort of replaced by Drogon, who liked to sit in that spot, which sort of symbolically represents the harpy being overthrown, or whatever you would like to call it, and being replaced by Danny, the dragons. So the harpy isn't ruling the city anymore. The dragon is ruling the city now. Which I think sort of ties the whole thing together in a pretty neat bow. But it does remain a mystery. I mean, I'm just... I don't know. This is purely speculation. But it seems like it has to be the case. Especially since whoever the harpy is seems to be, for all intents and purposes, really being the one who's ruling Marine, even now that Danny's there. So, someone who is esteemed enough to still be the shot caller, if you will, even after Danny took the city, would be someone who would be fitting to live in the Great Pyramid. I mean, it really does just seem like everyone just does whatever she says. His daughter is going to marry Danny because she told him to. It seems likely that Resnak just says to every word that the Green Grace would like said to Danny. It's almost as if that guy's voice is kind of irrelevant. It's the Green Grace's words coming out of Resnak's mouth. I don't know, she terrifies me. I, uh, I have a secret hope, and don't judge me, that when Danny comes back to the city, Drogon eats her. I would like that to happen. Um, I know it's kind of sick or whatever, but this is a sick story, so you can have sick thoughts when you're talking about a sick story, because sick things happen in this story. But please tell me if you think that I'm out of my mind for thinking this, because I've been theorizing that this is the case, or thinking that this is the case, for a while now. I just didn't know where I could put it in any of the videos. I wanted to put it in the Who is the Harpy video, but it just seemed like it was going to require us to go off on a pretty decent-sized tangent that would take us away from making the point which is the same issue that I've had over and over and over again, trying to weave this into one of Danny's videos. But, like I've said probably, I don't even know, a hundred times in live streams, George is brilliant at hiding stuff in plain sight by simply not mentioning it. He introduces us to this huge, grand pyramid. Danny lives here. It's enormous. It's so big that you have to have people carry you up the stairs because you'll never make it to the top. It's 800 feet. That's like 80 stories. That's like a skyscraper. And Danny lives all the way at the top of it. The Green Grace, obviously, she's an old lady. She's not making it up 75, 77 flights of stairs to go to Danny's throne room. That would take hours. You have to, like, leave at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning to get there when court opens. And as such, it's very formidable. It's the safest place for Danny to be, especially now that she's pulled all of her unsullied back inside. How are you going to attack that place? Can't. But, I don't know. This is, like, it's just brilliant the way that George does this, where... She's living there, and he just simply never tells us who lives there, or whose it was. So, until like two months ago, I never thought about it. When we were doing these Danny things, the this Danny series, and she first got to Marine, I want to say it was her fifth or sixth chapter, sixth chapter, I think, in A, a Storm of Swords, and she's sitting there on the terrace or whatever, eating breakfast with Masande. And I turned to Mariel and I go, whose freaking pyramid is this? Like, whose house is this? This is the nicest place. Yet, she never gets any complaints. 
from anyone being like, I want my house back. You're living in my house. Instead, she just gets the green grace coming with there and fucking with her every single day, rubbing salt in every single wound, wrapping Danny around her finger like a true player of the Game of Thrones. Like someone who was previously ruling the city would be able to do to a 15-year-old girl that's never really played the Game of Thrones before. Danny does pretty good considering that she has absolutely no training and has actually never really even spent any time around anyone smart. And there's a few instances where Danny... You can kind of see that Danny, who definitely really respected her early on, doesn't particularly like her anymore. She hasn't finally wrapped her mind around this bitch is the harpy. But I find it difficult to believe that she won't eventually figure it out, or maybe someone like Tyrion, if he joins her there, Tyrion will figure it out. But I'm looking forward to the day that this conniving bitch is outed as a mass murdering psycho. Like, it really bothers me that she comes to Danny the night after her family almost certainly slaughtered three innocent sl former slaves that were really good weavers because Danny ruled against the Galare family in favor of these th three freed slaves. And then she shows up at Danny's court the next day. She knows that Danny insists on being awoken if there's a murder. And therefore hasn't been getting any sleep because they're murdering people every night. And she looks at her and she goes, You look weary. Have you been sleeping? It's like, yo, bitch. I just wish that Danny would be like Dracaris. But she doesn't. Which is a, a tale for another day. But regardless, this is something that I've been dying to talk about and dying to bounce up this idea off of people. To see what people thought for months now and I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys think about this because I just find it fascinating that this has to be someone's house we just don't know whose it is and the harpy with all the symbolism that ties to it it's the one with the harpy on top of it it has a harpy throne then with Drogon supplanting the big bronze harpy that was on top of it, it it just all seems too perfect to be wrong, even though there's no evidence that really supports it, other than the, I don't know, logical connecting of dots that might not actually be connected. But in my mind, that makes sense. But I'm dying to know if it makes sense in your guys' minds, too. Because, I don't know, I go down these rabbit holes all the time and then Marianne will yell at me and, and I'll, because I'll spend entirely too much time trying to figure out how I can weave something like this into one of our other videos and she'll tell me that I'm wasting precious time and delaying and drawing out how long it takes us to finish videos, but, uh, which I, I'll freely admit that I, I am guilty of from time to time. But, I don't know, I feel really good about this one. And I've actually managed to sell the idea to Milady as well. And, uh, I'm really dying to know what you guys think. So, sorry this one's kind of short, but I just wanted to kind of make this like a special edition. I'm going to talk to you guys about a theory that I have, this in a completely unscripted manner, that... I'm not sure if I'm ever going to finally get it into a video. I would like to get it into a video someday, but at the very least, I wanted to bounce it off all of you first. So, I guess that's it. Have a good one, everyone.